You are one of the world's experts on feline leukemia virus. This is a really, really difficult disease with cats. This means you understand the intra-animal thing. Explain to us the intra-animal thing of this virus we have right now. Absolutely. Well, viruses are really adapted to infect a particular kind of species. So we have human viruses, we have cat viruses, we have monkey viruses, and the virus sort of comes to an agreement with its animal host and uh, usually doesn't want to kill its host because it wants to thrive and pass on um, things, uh, the viruses to other species of the same species. However, uh, the problem is that when a virus jumps from an animal to a human, it's suddenly in this strange new environment and anything could happen. And, and usually the biggest outbreaks and disease, diseases we have right. are in that situation. Dr. When Rohn, something jumps from an animal to a human. Yeah, back to David Baltimore a few years ago and you know, just the idea of how viruses mutate. Are we dealing with a stable illness or do you just presume over the weeks, over the months, this virus can mutate into forms either good or bad? That's a good point. It's a, it's, the virus is made out of RNA, not DNA, and that makes it inherently a little bit less stable than other viruses. Uh, so it definitely could mutate. And in fact, when viruses jump to animals, that's sometimes one of the first things that it does. It shuffles around to try to get its bearings, and it changes. So yes, it might be slightly less stable than other viruses, but uh, early indications is are that it's a bit more stable than something like influenza. Um, doctor, what works in protecting yourself? I mean, there's a number of, you know, things put in place and basically blockading uh, cities and, you know, stopping travel. But if you're a normal citizen looking at this, and a lot of people are worried about it, do you wear surgical masks? Do you wash your hands more? Is there anything that everyone can do to try and stop the spreading of this? Well, the spread definitely appears to be through droplets, through sneezing, and obviously, this also includes touching surfaces where people may have sneezed. So you want to stay away from sneezing people. If you're really paranoid, you want to stay off public transport, but I, I don't think, in, for example, in the UK, that's <clears throat> necessarily the case. Uh, masks, there's sort of a mixed, mixed uh, messaging on masks. Many of them are not effective. So it, really the best thing to do is to stay out of very crowded places where the virus is known to be circulating. Right. And, Definitely that hand sanitizer is a good idea. Dr. Rohn, part of your act is a wonderful grasp of history. How does this stuff end? Whether it's, you know, the plague years ago across Europe, how does a virus end? Is it the greater weather pattern or is it something different? Well, really, really nasty viruses like Ebola virus can just burn out. You know, if you destroy the whole village, there's nowhere left to go. And a virus without a host is dead in the water. On the other hand, viruses sometimes come to an agreement with their new hosts and they evolve to be less virulent and we learn to live with them. We hope we can come up with cures and vaccines. SARS is the best thing that we have to this, the best comparison that we can make. And SARS, we got it under control with public health measures. We didn't even need to deploy that amazing vaccine that we developed. 